Hey folks, welcome back to Affiliate Retirement. So today I'm back working on the Pike Bank Out. And the first thing I've been working on a little bit here and there the last week or so, and by a little bit, I'm telling you, more than it should have taken, but really not a lot. So I've been working on an interior, the cab. I've never done an interior on one of my old Smith Miller trucks yet. Um, but I decided this one because the bank out's going to have steerable front wheels. It really seemed like it needed a steering wheel. And really, I had some kind of ideas for the interior I wanted to try out. So here's what I have so far on the interior. As you can see, it took a lot of metal bending, shaping. Um, I made a, a pattern first. And uh, but the pattern is flexible, right? So I cut it out, that got me pretty close, but then there's a lot of uh, curve to that cab, so I had to notch these out to clear under the cowl of the cab. And then I didn't really like the way the dash fit up, um, I just couldn't get it close enough, and it's straight, the cab is curved, so I made me another pattern to fit the inside of the cab, spot welded that on there. Kind of took several little spot welds because I couldn't get the spot welder in there just how I wanted it, but it seems nice and steady now. So next, um, I've been working on the, I've been working on the seat. So here's what I've come up with so far. Um, what I started with, I don't know if you can really see, maybe. I made two little Z-shaped pieces, and I spot welded those together. You can see the spot welds there. And then I made the seat back separate. And this is not great, folks, and I'm probably going to angle the top or at least round it off, but I need to put it in the cab first and determine where to cut it off and see if this whole thing even looks right in there. So the first thing we're going to do is put a couple spot welds to weld the seat to the base and we're going to see how that turns out. Uh, I'm going to stop the camera and move the tripod so I can get it on the spot welder. Spot welder's right there behind me. Just a little Harbor Freight guy. But it is perfect for this kind of work. So let me move the tripod and we'll get going. Okay, so here we go. Here's the little Harbor Freight spot welder. And uh, I'm not going to lie, like I hadn't used this dude in quite a while. Uh, by quite a while, I mean like maybe a year. I don't know, maybe not quite that long. So when I started on the grain box for the bank out, I was holding the switch just a little too long. And I was also trying to use the tongs to clamp some stuff in a little tighter. That just don't work, folks, and it took me a while to remember that. Got to get clamps and hold it tight with clamps if your fitment's a little off, and then you can spot weld it. And on this 22 gauge, it just takes just a split second, and you're done. So let me show you how this goes. So I got the clamp on there to hold everything tight. So there we go. That's it. And I might have held that a little too long, but I am kind of going through three layers here. And we're just going to do just this one weld until we fit it in the cab and see how that looks. And then we'll come back and put one or two more spot welds on it. So hang on, I'll be, uh, I'll be right back with you. So actually, yeah, I kind of forgot, but... Guy needs to spot weld the seat into this interior and uh, so it'll stay in place going up in the cab. But we're just going to again, gosh darn it. Alright, well, I guess a guy is pretty distracted today. Probably ought to put another couple spot welds on this seat base. To hold it there and maybe even before that the guy's got this buddy l steering wheel 
that he pulled out of his wrecking yard. I don't think I showed that in the wrecking yard video the other day. So maybe this is already kind of in the project pile. Anyway, I think this is the steering wheel I'm going to use. And uh, so I got to get a hole drilled in this dash and try to get it kind of in there, kind of at the right angle in the right place. I've already made a little spot, a little black spot here, um, where I think the hole needs to go. Pretty well centered up on the seat. So I'm going to have to make sure that I can get that hole drilled. Uh, I might have to actually take the seat off to get the hole drilled. So I'm going to work on that, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so a guy's also been working on the chassis today, and of course, forgot to film part of it. Uh, but what's happening today is I got a new cross member in the back. Cut the old temporary cross member out of there and putting in a couple of other little cross members just to keep the frame stable. It probably doesn't need it, but we're doing it anyway. Let's weld a little bit of this up and then we'll move on to the next thing. Okay, I think that pretty well does it. I've got a couple more pieces I want to weld on this frame, but I'm probably going to wait until maybe after final fit up and do it right before paint. But guys, we're getting pretty close to paint already. This thing's moving along pretty, pretty good. Uh, hang on, I'll be right back with you on the next thing. Okay, so I decided everything's here, camera set up, tripod set up. Might as well weld the other pieces on right now. And then just call this frame almost done except for a little paint cleanup. So I'm going to weld a couple of these pieces on and I'll show you what I got going on. First two are on, second two are here and ready to go. By the way, if anybody sees my glasses, drop a comment. Seems to be more and more of a problem. Today's just another day. Failure's having an Easter egg hunt looking for his glasses. Had them earlier. Sometime around the time I brought the tripod out here is when they vanished. Okay. I don't remember where this frame was the last time I had it on camera. I don't know if I had these leaf springs in here or not. What I did is I cut a piece of pipe and hammered it a little flatter to get the height and the radius that I wanted. Uh, it kind of looked like leaf springs. And then what I did just now is I put a little piece on the top of them there those little square pieces kind of look like you know where the shackles would be or whatever I kind of felt like it needed something a little more there so there we go there it is without it there it is with it also I think I, I 
figured out what length the rear axle need to be. We got that welded in there. I don't think that was like that. Front axle. Uh, it was just sitting there, I think. I don't know if it was welded in when it was on camera last. I also radius the end of this bumper to make it clear the tires when they turn just a little bit more and then also so no sharp spots. And then what I was just doing earlier is I put these two underneath cross members in there and then the part I forgot to film and I guess I should probably maybe still weld that end and grind it down but I put this little angle iron in there for a little bit stiffer rear cross member. All right, so I think I will temporarily put this back together one more time and then we'll finish the video. Okay, folks, here it is temporarily back together. I went ahead and put the cab on because you kind of got to hold the interior in there while you slide the cab on. Uh, it's the cab attaching to the frame is what actually holds the interior in place. But I have a flashlight, so maybe now you can kind of see it a little better, what that interior is going to look like. I think it's going to be cool. I don't think it needs a right seat. These rigs probably wouldn't have had them. Anyway, I think I'm on the right track there with the steering wheel and the seat. I think by the time I get that seat upholstered, uh, spoiler alert, I think it'll look a lot better. So there it is. And then, I don't know if I showed you before or not, but front wheel steer. We'll go ahead and just put the box on here. So there's what she looks like. I went ahead and welded the back up. Got a couple little spots I need to touch up or put some body filler or something. So that's that's where we're at so far, except for one more thing here. I uh, showed in a YouTube short that I'd been working on the auger. And I did some more work on it. JB welded these ends on here, both of them. Now this is the exit end, and Mrs. Failure already called me out on it. Why isn't it open? Well, what I told her, if it's open, there's a bunch of sharp spots there. There's a bunch of spots for a kid to cut his finger or something, and I don't want that. Just similar to how I did this, like that thing's a guillotine, you know, with it open. By the way, I decided to just make this unloading auger out of half-inch black Schedule 40 pipe. Um, the size was just in between the two EMT conduits that I was looking at. It's not galvanized, so it's got that going for it. I could weld on here to get the hinge on. And it's going to sit on here something like this. That's not quite right, but something like that, right about there. So now the next challenge is getting it mounted on there and in the spot that I want it. Been thinking about that a while. That is going to be a challenge, but I think this thing is going to look super cool. And that auger will fold out, fold in. Got to make a bracket for it to sit on. Anyway, I think this is going to be super cool. As always, I pre appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. Appreciate you watching the progress here. We'll see you next time on Failure Retirement. Have a good day.